I bricked my home media and automation server setup so bad that I could not restore it at all. It was so bad that I couldn't even get this to reformat. I had to go out and purchase another micro SD card entirely. It was a huge pain and it took me days to set up my entire server again from scratch. So in today's video, I want to share with you three tips to help you avoid the situation that I got myself into. Tip number one, power off your device properly. Don't just unplug it like this. Instead of unplugging the power cable, you want to remote onto your server and click shut down. I cannot stress enough just how important it is to shut down properly, especially when you're running Linux on a Raspberry Pi with a micro SD card as your main root volume. This is a very volatile kind of file system and it doesn't like unexpected power outages or shutdowns. And for me, that resulted in a hardware level failure. So shut it down properly. Now, tip number two in order to avoid the situation that I was is to check everything into source control. I have about 11 individual pieces of software running on my home server. Now, all of them were set up using Docker Compose, which means it's defined as code. However, they were on my root volume, which was on my micro SD card, which got corrupted. So even though my entire setup was done via code, if the code is on the SD card that gets corrupted, it's no use to you, which is why I should have checked it into Git. To do this, we're going to head over to GitHub, log in with your account. If you don't have one, just create one. We're gonna go ahead and create a new repo. Give it a name. Choose whether you want it to be public or private. I'm gonna go ahead and make this a private repo and click create repository. We're gonna go ahead and copy this command and we're gonna clone the repo to our local machine. Go to a folder that you want. I'm gonna type git space clone space and we're gonna paste that URL. That will clone your repo down. Now the first time it might prompt you for some credentials, just go ahead and enter those in. It's just giving us a warning at the moment to let us know that we've cloned an empty repo, which is fine. We're gonna go into our home server uh, repo and I'm just going to type code space dot this will open up VS code editor it's just a nice handy shortcut you could also just manually open VS code and open this folder anyway and what we're going to do is for every one of these folders that contains different pieces of software we are going to copy anything defined as code into our repo for example we'll start with Homer we're going to go ahead and create a new folder called Homer and we're gonna go ahead and simply copy and paste that file across. Now I've got that code on my git repo, we're gonna go ahead and do git status. We're gonna add it by doing git space add space star. We're gonna give it a message, so we're gonna do git commit dash m, added homar config, and then we're gonna push it up to our repo. There we go. Now our code is checked into source control. It is up on GitHub. So if I ever lose my Raspberry Pi again, if it gets corrupted, house burns down, does not matter. Well, it does matter if my house burns down, but I will be able to get that code back. If I refresh my GitHub page, we can now see that we've got that home R folder and we've got our Docker compose file there. Essentially just rinse and repeat that entire process for every application and Docker compose file that you have on your server. Okay, you're shutting down properly. You've got everything checked into source control. The final tip that we want to do is configure our backups. When it comes to backups, we have our application specific backups that we can configure. And then we also have another set of backups that we can do across the file system. Here's an example of an application specific backup. That is where you go into the application and you configure it directly through the UI. I'm just going to do this for Home Assistant as an example. So if we head to Settings, System, Backups, we can go ahead and create a backup. We now have that backup available to use and we should probably take that and put that onto another drive. That's how you can do it through the application. I'm going to show you a really neat way to do it across the entire file system right now. So if we head over to our Raspberry Pi, 
For all of our software, everything is within a contained folder. If we have a look at Prowler as an example, everything specific to this application is within this data folder. So what we have to do is simply back up that one folder. So what we're going to do is write a script that will iterate through a list of folders that we give, create a zip or a tar backup of that, and then put that onto an external hard drive for us. I'm gonna go ahead and create a new folder called backups. Actually, I'm gonna call it backup script. And in here, we're gonna create a new shell script called backup script.sh. I will open source this script. It'll be one of the links in the description down below. So you can just copy and paste it as you please. This is the backup script we are going to execute. We are setting a backup time so we know the date that it was actually created. We're going to set a destination folder. So this is where we want the backup to actually land in. For me, I have used this particular location, which is on my external hard drive. We're then gonna define the sources. For demonstration purposes, I've only set three, but obviously you wanna add in each additional piece of software. At the moment, I've done Home R Sonar Radar, but obviously we also have Jellyfin, Home Assistant, and a bunch of extra things which we need to add to this list. We're gonna first start by removing everything in that backup folder location. This is just a cleanup task so that as this executes every single day, we don't get like hundreds of backups over the course of a year. So just a quick cleanup task. Now be very careful with this operation. Make sure it matches your actual destination because it's gonna essentially delete everything in that folder. Once the cleanup task has been completed, we are then going to back up every single file and folder that we have defined in our list. It's going to create a tar file, which is kind of like a compressed zip file, very similar. And it's going to place it in our backup location with a backup time. Now that we've created our backup script, we have to give it executable permissions in order to run it. We can do this by typing chmod space plus x and the name of our file. Now, if we type ls, we can see it's green, which means we can execute the script. I'm going to go ahead and run this. Now, I have been lazy and have not sorted out my Linux file permissions, so I'm gonna run this with root privileges. Probably not the best thing to do, but I'm just taking shortcuts. And it has now completed. If we head over to our backup folder, we can now see that we have a tar file. If we click into it, we can see that it's backed up Homer, Radar, and Sonar. If I click into it, I've got my Docker Compose file. I've got all of my config values that were set. And I can essentially use this to restore the application later down the road, should my micro SD card ever fail again in the future. Now that's really nice. The final piece of the puzzle is we want this backup script to automatically execute once a day. Now we can do that by using something called cron. Linux has the ability to run scheduled jobs using something called cron. Now this is tied to a particular user. Currently I'm logged in as my own user. Like I said, I'm being lazy with the file permission. So I'm just gonna switch over to my root user, which is sudo space su. If you wanna do it properly, we probably should just give the backup permissions the required access instead of running as root. I'm taking shortcuts and doing it in a less secure way just because I am being lazy. So sudo space su, we are now as our root user. We're gonna type in cron tab space dash e. And this is going to open up a file like this. You may get the option to select between three different editors. I just went with the first option, which was nano, which is this. And what we need to do is set a regular expression. So this is when do you want the script to execute and then give the file path to the script. I can never remember the regular expressions, but there's this handy website that helps us out, crontab.guru. It starts with minute, hour, day. So what we're going to do is click on the hour tab. We're gonna go at three o'clock in the morning. What this cron expression is saying is at 3.15 every single morning, do something. So we're gonna go ahead and copy this entire value, head back to our cron tab. We're gonna paste this in here. So at 3.15 every single morning, we want to then execute this particular script and we're gonna give the location to our backup script. And we're gonna put in the exact file path. So 
the location and the name of my backup script. Go ahead and save that file. And now that will execute our backup script every single day at 3.15 in the morning. Now, I actually wanna verify that our syntax is correct. And one way we can do this is going back into our contab. I'm just gonna quickly comment out our line and I'm gonna change the time to five stars. What this will say is execute every single minute forever. Go ahead and exit the file. And now we're gonna wait one minute to see if a file pops up in this location. Good thing we went through that exercise to verify because I found a bug. My initial folder location where I had my backup script had a space in there and it did not like that. So I removed the space and I updated my cron job to reflect that. And now we can see that our backup is there. We're gonna go ahead and update our cron job, put it back to executing at 3.15 every single morning. I'm gonna do Control K to remove that final line and we're going to exit and save. And job done, we are doing everything properly. We are shutting down in the correct way. We are source controlling all of our code. We are taking application level backups and we are also taking file system backups and putting that onto an external hard drive once a night. As an optional bonus, you could also modify that backup script to sync up to a cloud provider. So you could just pop it up into the cloud. We won't bother with that for now, but I think we are well covered. So moral of the story, follow all of these steps so you don't have to go through the same pain that I did where you have to set up your entire home media and automation server from scratch, which you just waste days of your life doing. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will catch you in the next one.